Well, hello everyone. This is Mark Levesque from Forest Glory Ministries. I'm coming to you with another lesson, lesson four, in uh, doing the uh, T for T model. Uh, we're going through the manual, the T for T manual. And you know, T for T is used all over the all over the world. There are movements on every continent except Antarctica, and uh, T for T and uh, other models that grew out of T for T. And T for T is short for Training for Trainers, and. Uh, Huge uh, mission organizations are using Training for Trainers, and, and they may call it something else, but it's the core of what they do. Because basically it goes back to what Jesus dis, uh, taught his disciples to do. And if we do what Jesus did, I mean, his disciples reached their whole world in a, in a generation. And if we do what Jesus did, uh, we, we can reach our whole world in our generation. And so Jesus did a number of things. This manual is designed based upon what Jesus and his disciples did to reach their world. And so there's a, there's a definite model that Jesus followed. Um, Jesus, uh, when he sent out his disciples, you can see that in Mark chapter 6, verses 7 to 13, he sent them out. He sent them out before he would come into an area. But he sent them out in pairs, uh, which helps us be faithful to do it because we have a partner to go with us. And it's always better to, uh, to, to go out in pairs. And what, what, what do we mean by going out? Well, we, we can go out to a restaurant. We can go out uh, shopping with someone. Um, and be open to sharing with people that the Holy Spirit leads us to. We can, uh, but we can also go out and just pray over a neighborhood. Um, Jesus sent his uh, disciples out into the, uh, into the other villages. And so when we go out, we call it prayer walking. And we go and we walk neighborhoods. And uh, the, you should go out with a leader, someone who's done it before, and just pray over homes. And if the Holy Spirit prompts us to go knock on a door and ask if we should pray for someone in the, in the house, we, we should do that. There, there was a woman who I had, uh, you know, I, I give homework out to our groups as we teach. And I was teaching in a city in Tanzania, Africa. And I told the group, I said, hey, uh, this is the first day of the workshop. We're going to meet again tomorrow, go through uh, the principles of training for trainers. But when you go out, pray over every home you go by on your way home. And if the Holy Spirit leads you to go into a home, go ask if there's someone in that house to pray for. And uh, one of the women uh, was on her way home praying over every house, and the Holy Spirit told her to go into a particular home. And so she went up and she knocked on the door, and she said, "Hey, I've been praying over the neighborhood, different homes, and uh, I just feel, I just was just wondering, is there anyone in this house that needs prayer?" And they said, "Yeah, there's a lady in the back room who's dying. You could go pray for her. She hasn't sat up in weeks." And I think it's just days before she's uh, going to pass into the next world. Well, um, the, the woman went in, prayed for her. As she was praying, the lady sat up. She sat up, and then the woman led her to Christ, you know, told, shared Jesus with her. The woman confessed Christ, prayed for her again. She was out of bed, running around the house, yelling, praise Jesus, praise Jesus. That whole household, and they were Muslim, that whole household came to Jesus Christ. Wonderful miracle. Not only was there a healing, but many people in the household were, were saved, were, came to know Jesus Christ. And so we want to go out into a neighborhood and pray for it. When I've had a group uh, that has stalled in growth, um, we pray, go and pray in the neighborhood. And the Lord honors our praying over the homes in the neighborhood and starts to, to uh, jumpstart the group again and they start to grow. And so prayer walking is a powerful practice and Jesus had his disciples do that. When they went out and prayed for people, went out and served uh, people in the neighborhoods, they came back to Jesus to tell them what happened. And so that's be going back to your group. And so what we want to do is we want to have groups. We call them T for T, disciple-making groups or discipleship groups. It's a group that is gathered together. Um, we look for a person when we're, when we're prayer walking. We, we look for a person of peace in that neighborhood, someone of influence in the neighborhood, someone who's, who comes to Christ or, or is a Christian, and that person might be the, their home, would likely be the place where we start our small group. And so we have the two, two of us that went prayer walking. We now have a person whose home we're meeting in. The Holy Spirit led us to that person. We, we pray that that person would show up, and when that person does, we meet at their home. And uh, then we keep prayer walking. We keep asking the Holy Spirit to lead people, send them across our path, and then the group begins to grow. When the group gets to a certain size, say uh, 10 to 12 people, we, we will spin off a group by bringing two people from that group to go to another neighborhood and start the process again, start a new group. 
Um, one of the things that we want to remember is that, like in point C here, is that Jesus told us to go out and share the good news, the good news that he's here with others. And we need to obey that command. The word obey literally means to listen with our heart. When we really know that the best thing for us, the most joyous thing we can do is share Jesus with others, we become a doer of the word. And the word doer literally means um, to, uh, to basically um, act on what we know. The word literally means to act on what God's told us to do. You know, we, uh, when we come back to our group every week, our T for T disciple making group, every time we have the group meeting once a week, we come back and we share with others what we, what we saw God do. And that the joy that people have when they share with others, like the woman who was sharing the story of that woman that was healed and the whole household came to Christ, that joy that she had made everyone else in the group want to go out and do the same thing. And so, so then what, what happens when we go and we're sharing uh, the good news about Jesus, what he's done for us, sharing our story? What, what do we do if they say yes to Jesus? Well, we lead them in a prayer to, to receive Christ. And then we, we certainly share Jesus' story with them, which is basically we call the gospel. And we teach that with the three circles. We'll cover that, I believe, in the next lesson. And, um, and so we, but we, we bring them back to our group, our, our small group meeting. And in that group, as, they, as, as we discuss the Bible, as we talk about what people are doing, um, we, they learn right along with everyone else. And they'll be, they'll be catching up, but they will learn with everyone else. One of the important things about these T for T groups, you know, Jesus spent more time with his 12 than any, with any other group. And so these small groups are important. And we always want to be reminding people of the different things that we do uh, to further God's kingdom like praying every morning to receive the Holy Spirit. We remind our people of that uh, by, by sharing um, how to reach out to people, how to, how to break the ice and start a conversation, and then how to lead someone to Christ. We, we on a regular basis, we train how to tell our story, how to tell the gospel uh, through with the three circles, Jesus' story. So we want to have regular training in these groups because studies have shown that groups that have consistent training in their small group, they lead more people to Christ and they multiply their groups and more and more people become leaders in the kingdom of God. Um, there's also in this manual on page uh, 17, there's 12 basic lessons that are recommended in the t for t process. After that, you can, you can um, go to Forest Glory's website and, and look for more lists of lessons to do, or simply ask your pastor, I mean, what would you like our group to train on this week? Or, and that many pastors are being proactive and suggesting that their T4T groups cover certain things each week. Or if the, if the pastor feels that you're mature enough, he'll let you or she'll let you just ask the Holy Spirit to guide you into what to cover next. One of the things that we talk about is multiplication is more powerful than addition that God created mathematics, that uh, he, he knows addition is great, but multiplication is better. And in the, in the chapters of the book of Acts, from chapter 1 through chapter 3, God added to the church daily. That's addition. He added group individuals to the church. But once the church hit Acts chapter 4, where they, they started to come under persecution, so they were very bold in their praying. They, they prayed for boldness. They were meeting in small groups, so there was a place for more people to come and be discipled. And all of a sudden, because of their fervor, because of their commitment, because they were going out and doing it, because they were praying for boldness to act, the Lord blessed them and their groups began to multiply. The number of disciples began to multiply. And so this manual will help you as we go further into the manual to become more and more involved in multiplication rather than just in addition. Multiplication is better. And so I hope you enjoyed this short uh, lesson, uh, fourth, fourth lesson uh, covering, you know, what to do when someone says yes to Jesus. How can we stay faithful? This is the importance of small group meetings. And uh, so these practices will really help you further God's kingdom and expand your ministry and your impact. Thank you very much. This is Mark Levesque from Forest Glory Ministries saying have a great day.